Okay, hello. Today I want to teach you how to do long division using an area model. Um, I want you to be patient with yourself because this is, it can be a difficult skill, but once you get the hang of it, you're going to love it. All right, so let's start with a problem. 534 divided by 4. Notice that this is the divisor, this is your dividend, and we're looking for a quotient, okay? Now, when we set up our rectangular array, you will look and see how many digits you have. And since the five is in the hundreds place, this is a box that we'll need to draw with three boxes for the three digits. Okay, when you set it up, put your dividend in the box and your divisor goes to the side. Now, just with long division, we have steps that we need to follow. So step one is divide, step two, multiply, Step three, subtract, and step four is we're gonna bring over. Now, let's try. You look at the divisor and you say, how many times will five, uh, four fit in to this first number? And four will go into five one time. Now, because the five is in the hundreds place, we're gonna put two zeros to represent those hun the hundreds place. Now, step two is to multiply. One times four is four. And don't forget, we're gonna fill these in with the zeros as well. Step three is subtract. Bring your four down. Three minus zero is three. 5 minus 4 is 1. Step 4, bring over. So you're going to bring over the 134. And we'll repeat back to the beginning with step 1 again. So how many times will 4 fit into 1? None, right? Okay. But 4 can fit into 13, right? So 4 will go into 13 three times. Notice that I'm lining up the three right in the tens place. I don't want to put it over here because four will not go into one, but four will fit into 13. So that's very important that you line these digits up. Now, three is has the value of the tens place. So this is, we need to fill this in with a zero to represent that that three is worth 30 things. Now, step two is to multiply. Three times four is 12. Don't forget to bring down your zero. Step um, three is to subtract. Bring down the four, one, and one minus one is zero. Step four, bring it over to the next box. Now, we're repeating right on back to the beginning again. Four, can it go into one? No, but four can go in to 14 three times. Multiply three times four is 12. Subtract four minus two is two. Now, we're out of boxes and you're gonna also notice something we're ending here with the two. When you finish with your division problem and your last number is smaller than the divisor, you know you're finished because this must be the remainder. All right, now this is the fun part. This is the part my students love. Pulling it all together, this is like an expanded form problem. We're going to pull it together and get our final quotient. 
So we have one that is in the hundreds space, three that is in the tens uh, digit, and the three that is in the ones space. Now, don't forget to add your remainder to the problem as well. Here's your final quotient. 133 with a remainder of 2. Now how do we know that this is correct? Well we don't, but we can check it, right? Now what's the inverse of division? Multiplication, right? So let's check it with multiplication. So let's take the quotient of 133 and let's multiply it times 4. And we'll just do this quickly. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 3 again is 12, plus 1 is 13. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Now, you may be saying, oh no, we didn't get it right because it's different. But don't forget, we've got to add the remainder. So the remainder of 2, add that on, and there you go. It is the same, right? So now 534 is what we started with. 534 is, that means that the answer is correct, right? So our quotient of 133 where the remainder of two is correct. Now we can do this with larger digits as well. This is a number in the hundreds place. What do you think if we did one uh, a, a number divided by a four digit number, how many boxes do you think we would need? One more box, right? So we can try another one. Uh, all right, let's try another one. Only this time, let's divide four digits divided by one digit. All right, so let's try a number 7,495 divided by three, okay? Now, because there are four digits, we will draw our array model with four boxes. All right. Your divisor goes to the side and the dividend goes inside the first box. Okay. We will continue and follow the steps that we've already tried and they're written to the side. And this is just a helpful reference um, to um, take a look at. It's, it's a good thing to have as you're walk, walking through these steps, especially as you begin this process. All right, we look at three and we say, can three go into seven? Yes, it can. Three will go into seven two times. And here is where we will add our zeros to fill in the rest of the digits. The reason we're doing this is because the seven is in the thousands place. And so we want to make sure that we have the three digits that will represent the thousands. All right, our second step is to multiply. Three times two is six. Don't forget to bring your zeros as well. Subtract, bring down the nine, four, seven minus six is one. Now bring over to your next box. This is your number, 1,495. Now we'll start again at the beginning. Three, will it go into one? No, but will it go into 14? Yes. It will go in there four times and I'm lining it up carefully because the four is in the hundreds space. I will add the zeros above these two numbers. And this is um, really important, boys and girls, when you write your number, if you don't line it up, you, will, you may forget how many zeros to put above the number. So be very careful to do that. All right, so now we're on step two, multiply. Three times four is 12. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring the zeros down. Subtract. 
And you notice I'm putting my finger on the, on the steps as we go through so that I can keep my space, uh, my, you know, my spot and know where I am. Now you don't have to do that, but it's a kind of a good habit so that, especially when you begin this process, so you'll know where you are. All right, carry this on over, 295, and we're ready to go back to the beginning. Will three go into two? No, but will it go into 29? Absolutely, it will go in nine times because nine times three is 27. Now, notice I forgot something right here. Don't forget to add the zero and so you'll have it here as well. Subtract and bring over. And the 25 goes here in the last box. Back to the beginning, three will go into two, no, but will it go into 25? Yes, eight times. Eight times three is 24 and subtract, and we're left with one. Now, we're not gonna carry it over. There's, we're out of boxes, and we know that the one is smaller than our divisor, so this must be the remainder. Now, this is just like an expanded form problem, isn't it? Pull it back together, and let's see what the quotient is. Two in the thousands, four in the hundreds, nine in the tens, eight in the ones, and with a remainder of one. Always check your work to make sure that this is correct. Remember how to check, multiply your quotient times the divisor. And you can quickly do this times three. Three times eight is 24. 27, 28, 29, 12, 13, 14, 6, 7. And don't forget to add in the remainder. Do our numbers match? They do. All right, so that's great. We know that it is correct when our numbers are, um, are match up. And we know it's reasonable. We know it's a reasonable answer. So our quotient is 2,498 with a remainder of one. Now isn't that fun? You're gonna love it. It's, it takes practice, but you can do it. You just have to practice several uh, problems and you'll get the hang of it. All right, thanks for watching.